Teams on two continents have reached a similar milestone in their efforts to access a vital energy headwater in the combat against climate change. They've both constructed massive magnets. Welcome everyone! How are you doing today? Before we proceed with this video, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Kindly click on the notification bell to get updates on our exciting content. Today, we are looking at the massive milestone magnetic fusion has achieved so far in our world presently. Before we take it any further, let's comprehend the subject. What is magnetic fusion? And how does it work? Nuclear fusion generates energy by releasing heat when hydrogen nuclei converted into the plasma state of matter fuse to make helium. The stellarator is based on an optimized magnetic field that protects the hot plasma from the cold wall. Complex superconducting magnetic field coils create the magnetic field. It is one of two types of magnetic confinement fusion reactors under development today. These coils produce a ring-shaped, twisted magnetic cage in which a few milligrams of hydrogen gas will be raised by heating the temperature as high as 100 million degrees Celsius, converting it to plasma. Wendell Stein 7X seeks to demonstrate the crucial stellarator property, continuous operation with stable high performance, with plasma pulses lasting up to 30 minutes. What is the project's purpose? The Wendell Stein 7X Stellarator is one of the world's largest nuclear fusion devices and the most advanced of its kind. Its goal is to bring the Stellarator concept to fruition in a power plant that generates energy by fusing hydrogen nuclei and harnessing the heat generated. Is this project still in the early stages of development? The project received approval in 1996, and the first plasma was created in December of that year. After three successful operational phases, the machine's thorough upgrade commenced at the end of 2018. Plasma operation is planned to begin in 2022, once the necessary infrastructure for 30-minute high-performance plasma pulses has been installed. With a successful demonstration of a critical technology, a highly powerful magnet that uses very little energy, Fusion took a significant step ahead in its transition from the lab to commercial viability. Commonwealth Fusion Systems CFS, and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology's Plasma Science and Fusion Center PSFC, announced on Wednesday that the test was completed at the MIT Plasma Science and Fusion Center in Cambridge, Massachusetts on Sunday at 6 a.m. The magnet achieved 20 Teslas during the test, which is a unit of measurement for a magnet's strength. It's named after the engineer Nikola Tesla, just like the car firm. For comparison, the magnetic field of a standard MRI or magnetic resonance imaging scan is 12 times higher, at 20 Teslas. It accomplished so using just approximately 30 watts of energy, which is several orders of magnitude less than the standard copper conducting magnet that MIT had previously tested, which consumed 200 million watts. On the following Thursday, scientists at the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor in southern France received the first section of a gigantic magnet capable of lifting an aircraft carrier, according to its American maker. The magnet, which stands about 60 feet tall and has a diameter of 14 feet when fully completed, is a critical component in the 35-nation effort to master nuclear fusion. Separately this week, MIT scientists and a private business claimed that they too had achieved a breakthrough with the successful test of the world's strongest high-temperature superconducting magnet. The team's magnet could allow them to beat ITER to the finish line in the race to build a sun on Earth. Fusion proponents claim that, unlike existing fission nuclear reactors, which produce radioactive waste and occasionally catastrophic meltdowns, it provides a clean and almost endless supply of energy. If scientists and engineers can figure out a way to harness it, that is. They've been working on this problem for nearly a century. Rather than dividing atoms, fusion resembles the natural process in which two hydrogen atoms fuse together to form a single helium atom, as well as a lot of energy. Fusion necessitates enormous amounts of heat and pressure, converting hydrogen into an electrically charged plasma or gas and controlling it in a donut-shaped vacuum chamber is one way to accomplish this. This was accomplished with the help of powerful superconducting magnets like the central solenoid that General Atomics began exporting to France this summer from San Diego. 
According to experts, ITER is now about 76% complete, and they plan to start up the reactor in early 2026. Each important first-of-a-kind component completed, such as the first module of the central solenoid, builds a level of confidence in the ability to accomplish the complicated engineering of the entire machine. By 2035, the leading goal is to create 10 times more energy than is required to heat the plasma, demonstrating that fusion technology is feasible. The Massachusetts team, which claims to have created a magnetic field double that of ITER, with a magnet 40 times smaller, is one of many trying to beat them to the prize. In the early 2030s, MIT and Commonwealth Fusion System experts believe they will have a device ready for everyday usage. This was not planned to be scientific experimentation, but rather a commercial venture. While ITER is not designed to generate electricity, it will serve as a model for comparable but more complex reactors if it is successful. Proponents of the project claim that even if it fails, the countries involved will have acquired technical abilities that may be used in a variety of sectors, including particle physics and the production of new materials that can survive the sun's heat. The United States, China, South Korea, Russia, India, Japan, and much of Europe all contribute to the project's $20 billion costs and gain mutually from the scientific achievements and intellectual property developed. The major solenoid is one of the 12 primary U.S. contributions to ITER, all of which are built by American companies and funded by Congress to support American jobs. Having the first module securely transported to the ITER site is such a triumph, said John Smith, head of engineering and projects at General Atomics. Every component of the production process has to be developed from the ground up. Years were spent inventing new technologies and methods to manufacture and transport the large magnet parts around their factory and subsequently around the world. The magnet's coils weigh 250,000 pounds. The engineering expertise gained over this time will be invaluable for future projects of this magnitude. ITER's goal is to show that fusion can be a viable and economically feasible source of energy. But we're already thinking about the next step. That will be crucial to making fusion commercially viable, and there is already a slew of fantastic suggestions for how to get there. According to Frederick Bordery, who led the design and building of another fiendishly complicated scientific equipment, CERN's Large Hadron Collider, nuclear energy, first fission, then fusion, is still the world's greatest hope for lowering greenhouse gas emissions to zero by 2050. In relation to the consequences of climate change, the cost of ITER is a drop in the bucket, he remarked. We'll have to come up with the cash. Well, if fusion can be achieved and commercialized on Earth, it will give a nearly limitless supply of clean energy without the trash that nuclear fission produces, which can last thousands of years. Magnets contain and insulate burning plasma for nuclear fusion reactions in a tokamak, a donut-shaped fusion engine. Till now, all of the energy produced by fusion reactions has been used to start and maintain the process. According to CFS and MIT's PSFC scientists and engineers, the good performance of their novel magnet technology is a major step in their technological development of commercialized fusion. This isn't a marketing ploy. It's the truth. With advancements in the fusion business, we're seeing the birth of a new clean, sustainable, and always available energy source. ARC, the country's first fusion power plant, is expected to be operational in the early 2030s. That's it, folks, on the magnetic fusion milestone. Do you think there will be a tremendous upgrade from these labs by the end of the year? Let us know your observations and thoughts in the comments section below. If this video was insightful for you, then go on and like this video. Please kindly subscribe to our channel and click on the bell button for more of our updates.